In this video, I'm going to show you how to update the cores on your Wii U version of RetroArch. So as time goes on, RetroArch gets updated and features get added, cores get updated to be better than they were, or on the rare occasion, worse, but uh, we're not we're going to talk about that. We're going to be optimistic. Um, but you're going to want to update your cores in RetroArch. So in this video, I'm going to go over the process of doing so, so you can have the most up-to-date versions available. So let's dive in. So to get started with our update process, the first thing I recommend doing is backing up your current RetroArch folder, just in case you update and there's a core that you used previously that now works worse. This way we'll have a nice backup of our currently working configuration. So just make a backup of it. At least until you can verify that everything you have is going to still work as expected or better. After your current RetroArch folder is backed up, we are going to download the latest nightly version of RetroArch. So you can head over to RetroArch.com, click on Downloads, and then we're going to scroll to near the bottom here and click on Nightly Builds. Then we're going to go up to Nintendo, Wii U, and we're going to download the very last entry here, RetroArch underscore RPX dot 7 zip. This will always be the most up-to-date version of RetroArch available. If you want to go back a few days, there is the option for that as well. But download RetroArch underscore RPX dot 7 zip. And after that has finished downloading, we just need to get it extracted. You will need 7-zip or some other program that will open up 7-zip files, but it's as easy as just 7-zip, extract to the folder. And looky there, there it is. All right, so go ahead and open up the folder after you get it extracted. And we are looking for the RetroArch folder here. So now what we're gonna do is basically copy this RetroArch folder into our Wii U SD card, like so. And we're just gonna tell it to overwrite everything it finds once it gives us the option to. So when it finally pops up, just click replace the files and the destination, and then let it do its thing. And after it finishes copying, you will have the most up-to-date versions of the cores, as well as new cores that might have been added in since the last time you updated, and still have all of your system folder, saves, and save states available to you, as well as your playlist files, and your default configurations. Now, just as a quick note, if you try to load it up, if it's been a long time since you've updated and you update it and it doesn't work, you might need to delete your RetroArch config and start over. Just keep a mental note of that if something doesn't work right. But once you have that RetroArch folder copied over, we can close out of everything on our computer, take the SD card out, put it in our Wii U, and make sure everything is working as expected. Now, just as a quick reminder, this is a continuation of my original Wii U RetroArch install video, so please refer back to that video for how to get RetroArch set up in the first place, as well as the option of installing this awesome forwarder channel you see here on my Wii U home screen. But now that that's out of the way, let's go ahead and boot into RetroArch and make sure everything is still working properly. And there we go, RetroArch has booted up. I have all of my playlists still intact. So I'm just gonna try to boot into a game and see what happens. All right, and at least I can verify that Super Nintendo is working as expected. Another method of updating your installed cores is to actually use the online updater itself within the Wii U. So if you go to your main menu and scroll down to online updater, you can press A on this, and you can press A on update installed cores, and it will update all of your currently installed cores to the latest versions. 
One of the reasons I like doing the first method is that it ensures that all of the other program files within RetroArch are also updated and not just the cores. But if you're only looking to update the cores, this is a very easy way of doing it. And after the process is complete, all of your cores will be at their latest versions. So after a brief overlook of all of my cores that I have installed, I've been able to run all the games on them, so I know the cores are still working, which is good. I haven't spent enough time with this latest update to know if any cores are working better than previously, but at least they're not working worse, and they are still working, so hooray. That is a successful update. But that's where I'm going to call it for this video. As always, if you happen to have any questions, feel free to ask me down in the comment section below, and I will do my best to try to help you out. But now if you could all do me a huge favor, and please be sure to hit that like or dislike button, just depending on how much you like today's video. And if you haven't done so already, please hit that sub button so you can see when new videos like this go live. Lots more retro art goodness to come, so great to have you along for the ride. If you want to help support the channel further, you can also check out that join button here on YouTube or the Patreon link in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. A little really goes a long way to keeping this place running and I can't do it without you guys, so thank you all so much. And thank you especially to my champions who have already been part of this and been with me for a while. Thank you all so much. Y'all are friggin' rock stars. But that's gonna do it for this one, so until next time my wonderful internet peeps, stay awesome and we will see you all back next video.